Hey guys, Kurt here with NK Garage, and today we've got another load of tools for you guys, but we didn't go very far to get them. Nick is actually going to be letting go some of his personal collection of Stanley woodworking tools, including a lot of bench planes, spoke shaves, and other little goodies. So... Nick, you want to give a quick little introduction on uh, where some of this stuff came from and how you came in possession of it? So yeah, if you don't know, the garage and house that we're standing in belonged to my grandparents. They actually built it in 1970. My grandfather was a pattern maker for the New York City Board of Education. So he worked in the New York, New York City school system as a pattern maker and a carpenter. So he had a long history with woodworking tools. And then my, uh, on my mom's side, this is, uh, her middle brother was also a lifelong carpenter. So between them, uh, you know, they both worked through this shop. We, they've collected quite a, a, an amount of good word woodworking tools. So, yeah. And it's to my understanding that this is just a small portion of what was left over. There have been a lot that have been distributed to uh, family and friends and all that. Correct. Yeah, no, this is this is a good amount of uh, what was left over, but this is what uh, we've kind of been referring to it as my retirement because when you see uh, some of the stuff, it's, it's quite nice. Yeah, so we've got the collection out in front of you guys right now, and this is all Stanley, and there's not a lot of like super old antique stanley stuff there's a couple pieces in here but a lot of this stuff is probably from the early 80s we believe these spoke shaves over here that are brand new in package uh made in england stanley number 151s they are dated 1984 and there's a barcode on the package so they are not that old i mean 1984 is still 40 years old and they are very well preserved, but most of this stuff is about 40 years old, and then some of the stuff goes back earlier than that. But let's take a look. I think let's jump right in to the bench planes because this is a you know huge collector's item and definitely something that is super interesting. These ones right here are all used. We have a Stanley. USA made Bailey number six, fair amount of use on it. You know, his grandfather and uncle probably both used this in this house here and uh, it's in decent shape, you know, definitely used, got a little bit of paint chipping and some rusting and, you know, signs of use on her, but she's definitely still a good unit. Next up is the Stanley USA made Bailey, number five and a quarter. This one's a nice thin but long little plane here in very nice shape. Next up here, we have two Stanley number fours. Uh, one is the Bailey and the other one is just marked USA. They're both USA made. Number fours, you know, a smaller, you know, mid-size plane. Number right here, we have a Stanley number 220. This one unfortunately looks like it might have uh, fallen to the floor at some point. But, uh, I mean, it's still kind of useful as long as you don't get your fingers stuck in there or hurt your hand on that. Wear some gloves. This guy's pretty interesting. It's a little mini Stanley plane. Kind of just cool little piece here. Very well and sturdy made. So it's a nice one. And then we get into some of the gems. So these... We're not quite sure what the story is behind it, but we know that they, they possibly came home from the school at some point. Whether or not they were gifts or if he purchased them from them, maybe they were getting rid of them. Who knows? These are brand new inbox. We have two of the Stanley number five bench planes. These are both made in England, the original packaging, the original manual. It's just cool looking through here. It's got tons of information 
and all different figures on how to use and adjust your plane. Just really cool, really nice information and original booklet. The one up here has been pulled out of the wrapper so we can actually take a sneak peek at this gem and just take a look at that. That is a beauty. My favorite part about this is the handle. Uh, it's got this purplish tone to it and it just looks so, it, it's like art looking at this with the brass knob and everything. All those colors just go so well together. Yeah, I mean that is just a gem. I believe, Nick, you said eventually you want to display this in kind of like a shadow box case on a wall somewhere. Yeah, I I, I am going to keep probably one of these, uh, what, this is the five? This is a number five. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to keep the five and one of the ones you'll see in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. Just frame them in a box because they just, you know, they look so cool and it would be like an ode to my grandfather because he kind of, you know, I never got to meet him, but this is some of his tooling and it's just amazing to see the quality on this. Yeah, and these aren't original production models, um, like the older ones with the patent dates. These are, you know, remade. They are genuine Stanley, but they were, you know, well made in England. Probably, uh, we think, just because some of these boxes have barcodes on them. Probably early 80s is our guess. So there are two number fives. Then there is a number six in here. This one... The uh, paper has been removed at some point. It's still got a tag on it. And, you know, it could use a little bit of a cleaning here. Some dust on it. But it's just, as well, a nice piece. This one is actually made in USA. Nice, nice number six plane for sure. We're not quite sure what these would be valued at. You know, they're not the super old rare ones, which if you found an old rare one in this condition would be amazing. But I assume that these would probably fetch definitely over $100 a piece, maybe closer to $200 or more. If anybody has any better knowledge on that, you know, feel free to leave a comment. This is another piece that is going to stay in Nick's collection, the number seven. Beautiful, beautiful plane. Now hopefully you can get a good size reference of that. It's a pretty big guy. Yeah, I mean it's at least two feet long. Twenty-two inches. A decent size guy right there. and again it has that purpley handle so i think like kurt said i'll be keeping the uh unwrapped five and then the seven uh both we'll leave it out both to display had to measure it with our stanley power lock tape measure of course uh continuing on with the plane tour sort of thing we have some rabbit planes over here we have two New in box, Stanley number 78, it's made in England. Nice, beautiful pieces here. Just beautiful works of art, beautiful tooling. There is one here, and with the extra pieces in here, there's also another one, brand new in package here. And we have, uh, this one is also a number 78 made in England. And this one is slightly used. There are two smaller rabbit planes in here. These are the bullnose style. These are the 75s. And there's a little bit of surface rust in some of this stuff that had gotten moisture over the years, but not too bad. Could definitely be cleaned up. Definitely cool, cool stuff here. And then here's yet again another rabbit plane this one is the 92 has the like all um silver finish i don't know what to call that but it's a nice thin little but long little rabbit plane we got some specialty planes down here 
This guy might be one of the rare pieces in the lot. I know these. this is definitely an older one. This is a Stanley number no. 5, and it's a corner edge trim plane. Definitely a cool piece. And this one over here is the Stanley number no. 71. It's called a router plane. Kind of, I love the two little handle kind of thing, but there's the bit in there. Then moving on, we got some spoke shaves. We've obviously got three of these brand new in package, number 151s made in England. These guys, I just love them. I think they're completely awesome. Two of them actually came in this box right here, quantity of two. And there's a little one down here. I'm not sure which model this is. Um, number 63, I believe, made in USA. It's got the round bottom. And then this one here is an ADM cabinet scraper. Flat bottom Stanley. Some other Stanley stuff that there is here as well. Two of these Stanley 19-400 um molding and framing uh corner jigs corner jigs yeah corner clamps yeah and you just adjust them as necessary and you can do a really good accurate job at uh cutting your either if you're doing corner molding any kind of framing really you know you could be making a picture frame or even a door frame molding if you want to get really precise in here and have them line up perfectly this is definitely a good way to do it and there are two of these. Both of them with very little to almost no use on them. Yeah, these spin, uh, I mean, like a dream. The finish on here is nice and smooth. You can mount them, you can turn them. Both made in USA. And then uh, we got some other little stuff. We have the dowling jig. Nothing too special. I don't think these are too rare. Stanley number 59 dialing jig. But this guy is really cool. This is a Stanley number 77 New Britain, Connecticut, USA dialing jig. In my understanding, these are not uh, too common. They're not cheap if you are a collector. I do believe that all of the bits, which Nick does not have, are the most expensive parts. Yeah, so basically, uh, this is for different size square wood that you put into here, and then this is a bit, and this will turn, I think in this case, this is a half inch uh, bit right here. So as you crank that, it's almost like a pencil sharpener, and it sharp sharpens whatever square wood you have into a one half inch dowel. These, with the full set of bits as you would have got them, are listed on eBay occasionally for somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,000 to $1,500. One without the set of bits, I'm not sure, but it's all there. It's all original. It's just so cool with the hand crank. It does look cool. It looks like an old like uh, steam train kind of deal. And it's, it is in very good condition aside from the bit of surface rust. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is all cool. I just love old tools. And I'm not a big word worker or anything, guys, but I just appreciate, you know, some of my favorites. I really do love the spoke shaves. I just like holding them. Um, this guy's kind of cool, just holding the two handles, you know. This feels cool. I don't personally really do much woodworking hobbyist stuff but i do enjoy and love tools of all kinds so we just figured we'd share it with you guys you know show you uh all this stuff you know while nick still has it because i believe he might be getting rid of some of it as there are doubles and triples of some stuff but some of it is going to stay in his collection for a lifetime and the rest of it uh might move on to some other people that are interested in collecting and uh, woodworking hobbies as well. Yeah, like Kurt said, I'm probably going to be letting some of this go. Um, mainly that is to make room for some other tools that we plan on purchasing in the future. Um, we're not too much into the woodworking stuff. We enjoy metalworking a little bit more. It, we find it more useful for the type of work that we do and repairs that we do. So letting go of some of this is a little sad. 
but it will make room and funds for purchasing new stuff. So it's not yeah. always a sad thing to let go of some of the old stuff as long as you're putting it, you know, towards something that you might suit you better. Yeah, you don't have to hold on to everything. But uh, I want you guys to stay tuned. We got some big things coming here at NK. And I mean like big, big stuff. So... There's going to be some more videos coming. Some tool hauls. Large, large tool hauls.